Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess Vim, you know, was talking about um, how Alexander um, sort of subliminally um, caught exactly what he wanted, and um, I feel like that's how um, Vim and I worked. Um, we we met before the film, and <laughs> it comes. <laughs> And it comes with a very light touch, so he's very good at that kind of subliminal directing, I guess. <coughs> um, it's difficult to... <laughs> um, how did um, the famous Scorpion song, um, Wind of Change, end up in the interview? Did Wim Wenders show you this uh, famous classic? <laughs> you know one? what I mean? No. Like in the, in the Wait, last... Say it again, I, I just couldn't understand you. Uh, Scorpion's Wind of Change, this famous Berlin oh, Wall oh, song. Oh, 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 oh. Which was a huge scene uh, in the end uh, during the interview. <laughs> so where did you get it from? And is the... And it was um, not them. No, it was not them. <laughs> it's your fault. Yeah. And after all the huge uh, controversy, um, is the title of uh, this movie maybe how you think about it now? So everything will be fine? I think everything will be fine, yes. <laughs> okay. Next question, please. Yes, you're here in the front. Hi, Brendan Power for Berlin Loves You. I just want a quick double two-parter question for James. I noticed you smoking a joint at one stage during the film. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was wondering <laughs> if there were any different... How you What's that say about you? <laughs> well, I was wondering how, uh, whether you prepare any differently for movies that, are, that, that you star in, which are considered stoner movies compared to films um, like this. Every movie's different, you know, whether it's a comedy, drama, you know, uh, every character I play is different, and um, <clears throat> I think there are certain essential things that I, I think about with a character, you know, um, every character has... Powerful, your depiction of mourning, and maybe that's unanswerable, I have another quick question. <laughs> Throwing Faulkner into the fire, James, that had to be you, is that means no more Faulkner, or... No more Faulkner, James? I... It was your line. <laughs> I had to say it under It really it was, it was protest. in the script, though. <laughs> it was in the script, and James reluctantly accepted the line. <laughs> yes, your question in the middle, please. Um, La Cerda, uh, Brazilian Press. I have one question to James Franco and one to Wim Wenders. Um, your character is very short, it's very economical in the movements in this character that you've, been, uh, that you've played in this film. Did you have a special preparation for, for um, I, If I remember after all of that, I think the first part of the question was about the sort of minimalist approach of the character, <coughs> uh, uh, of my um, interpretation of the character. And um, <coughs> I'm trying to remember how that all came about, but I, I th somehow I got a sense or um, a direct kind of direction from Vim um, to kind of play it that way, that I, I had a feeling that, you know, this was going to be a movie about uh, a person's interior state, and, um, and which is, I think, one of the reasons Vim was using 3D in the way that he used it to kind of reveal, um, as we said during filming, kind of the soul of the character in a new way and to engage the audience with the character um, <clears throat> or all of the characters in a much closer way than, than we're used to in non-3D films. And, um, and so he just seemed like, you know, a kind of character of the of the mind a contemplative character a character who um, lives through his work and um, sort of is less expressive in his relationships and um, with other people and um, and that that was that was part of the character and also kind of part of the um, whole tone of the film um, and so maybe it was just me trying to kind of fit myself into the into the the atmosphere established with with every all the other elements of the film um, and Berlin's great you know I've been here many many times I've been to the festival many times I've had art shows here and um, 
I always have a a great and epic experience when I'm when I'm in Berlin. Yeah. I'm having his or her needs, has his or her worldview, um, relationships, occupation, lack of occupation. Um, do they partake in you know drugs or not? Um, these are all things that I think about whatever you know with whatever character I do and whatever movie I'm I'm doing. Um, and I think maybe what you're getting at is you know sometimes a movie will have a vastly different kind of tone or um, um, way of working than another film. So the interview is a very different film than this one, and um, the character I play in there is much larger. The performance is much larger, but um, whereas this one is, you could say, minimalist, but um, um, at the core, I'm still asking the same questions. You know, who are, who is this character? What does he want? How does he express himself? And um, um, so that is always the, the same. And just very quickly, if I might ask, you're starring in three films during the Berlinale, and you've got. I looked at your uh, filmography for this upcoming year. You've got six or seven, maybe eight more roles in feature films. Do you ever worry that you might be spreading yourself a little bit thin this year? I mean, I, you know, we did these movies, uh, this movie, I don't know, over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I, you know, I do one movie at a time, so I, you know, I think I can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question on the right side near the Yes, uh, Harold von der Kursk, Viva Press Rome. Uh, Mr. Franco, in addition to distinguishing yourself as an actor, you've e explored various other forms of artistic expression. And the same has Mr. Venders uh, in his brilliant documentaries on dance and on music. Did you regard Mr. Venders as a kindred spirit in any way? Vim Venders has been <clears throat> um, someone I've looked up to for a long time, or whose work I've admired for a long time. And um, um, yeah, I mean, one of the great things about Vim is he um, is a aficionado and is, ex uh, is passionate about all aspects of um, filmmaking, um, the music, the imagery, the, you know, the photography, the performance, uh, the writing, all of these things are, um, it feels like of equal importance to Vim to the extent that um, sometimes um, he'll pursue those things um, outside of a film and just pursue that, you know, photography for, you know, in its, in its own um, sphere. And I, um, and the way he's done that with such expertise and, um, Proficiency and um, is something that you know I, I look up to and try to achieve. You know. Maybe Charlotte, you can add something in terms of the subplot of the movie. I think it's a very important thing also to talk about having kids in the movie, losing kids, living with kids, the concept of having a family. What? Yeah, maybe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. No, it's just, I guess, a really important thing in the movies also about the, the topic about talking about kids, having kids, living with kids, losing kids, sure. But also in the first hour, I guess you were the first in the film after one hour who gives a very nice saying good night to the boy. It's the first warm and tender thing happening to a kid in the movie. So dealing in this and thinking about your part as Kate, can you comment it a bit on this? I didn't want to relate to anything personal, just because what she goes through, mm -hmm. that was superstitious. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, for a long time, it seems like um, Werner's reputation is that he is uh, an incredibly intense director and um, that making a movie with him um, is like a physical, you know, uh, challenge or something, um, or you have to undergo some sort of um, fear factor challenges of eating bugs or something, and... Um, <laughs> um, you can eat your shoe. <laughs> or eat the shoe. <laughs> but, um, 
In fact, on that movie, and maybe this was the exception, but on this movie that we did, Queen of the Desert, it was, you know, for the first time he had a female protagonist, um, and my scenes in the movie were all um, part of this um, love story. And so what I got was a very um, gentle Werner, and, um, you know, he... I guess one similarity I would say is that he and Vim in their own ways are um, extremely concerned with um, the visual um, side of things and they create these um, incredible compositions and, um, and that's something, you know, both films just, you know, are breath, look, look amazing. Um, so there's a lot of care put into that. Um, um, I would still say, you know, uh, Vim has, um, you know, as, as um, engaged as he is, his approach has a lighter touch. Werner is still sort of in there. He makes a point of, um, you know, clacking the slate uh, and, um, <laughs> you know, he's just always there in the, you know, center of things in a big way, but, um, and I think it's just a way for him to kind of feel connected to absolutely every department. And Vim is, is connected in, this, in his own way, in this, in, you know, to the same degree, but um, it comes off a little, a little you know, more gentle. Um, but they're, um, they're both, um, they were both great to work with. I mean, it was, uh, I would do it again with both of them in a second. I was sort of talking about it 